Well, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a is a melody when I raise a hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me well I'm gonna see in the middle of a storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar will arise for death is defeated and the king is alive let's stand as we sing will I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me will I raise a hallelujah and I Watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, fear you lost your hope. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. And up from the ashes, our hope will arise. For death is defeated, and the King is alive. So sing a little louder. death being defeated the king is alive this morning do me a favor say howdy to everyone around you today done for. 
for me
surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence I daily live Lord to Jesus I surrender humbly at his feet I bow worldly pleasures all forsaken Jesus, take me now. Every thought, every word, every deed, Lord, this is my worship to you. Every thought, every word, every deed, yeah, this is my worship to thank you for the uh, songs of praise and the words about surrender, about worshiping you, about making you the center of our life, Lord. We need to hear all that. So often the world tells us it's about us. The world tells us that we need to take care of ourselves, enjoy ourselves, please ourselves, when 
The call of the cross is to serve. The call of the cross is to deny ourselves and follow you. So we pray, Lord, you would help us to do that. Help us to surrender all that we have to you, our time, our energy, our resources, everything that we have, Lord. Help us to surrender to you and allow you to use them in our lives. And, Lord, we pray that our prayer life would, would be reflective of our relationship with you, that we would pray. We pray for all those who are in need, everyone we can think of, everyone we've heard about that's in need, those who are, that we don't know and those that we do know. Help us, Lord, to encourage one another until you come back. Help us to lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ. And also, Lord, pray for those who are lost, those who are outside of the church, those who are far away from you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to encourage them. Help us to let them know about Jesus. And, Lord, we'll give you thanks. We'll give you praise. And we pray that would be our attitude all the time, giving praise and thanks. We pray that it not would just be a habit, but it would be a part of our hearts and lives that we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, great to see you all here this morning, and I uh, hope that you're doing well. hope things are going good for you. It's good to see some of our folks back in town. And also good to see some of our folks uh, uh, here with us uh, again uh, who have visited. And so if you're a visitor, we want you to come back and see us again and again and again. If you're a first-timer, we want to encourage you to go to the Welcome Center. And uh, they've got a gift back there they want to give to you. You also get to meet some of our, our people and uh, they want to welcome you uh, officially. We want you to feel uh, like you're a part of the church, whether you're visiting or not. We want you to come back again and again and again. There's no pressure here about you come and you think we're going to jump on you. We're not going to do that. Uh, we are trying to transition back into welcoming uh, one another. This church is a hugging church. This church is a pat on the back church and a handshaking church, okay? Even there's some kissing that goes on sometimes. <laughs> in our church uh it's not sanctioned but it happens okay and so uh we we just want you to know that that we want to be as friendly as possible because we know this is not our church it's the lord's church jesus was here uh he would not stop hugging through the through the welcome time he would not stop welcoming people and and we want to do that same thing we want to do that same thing we're talking about uh, jesus uh what jesus said in uh, matthew chapter 16 uh, something I like to revisit from time to time, uh, something that we should talk about, think about who uh, who do men say that I am, who do people say that Jesus is, what do they think about Jesus? Uh, we need to know what our neighbor, what our neighbor thinks about Christ, whether they know him or not, but also what do they think about him? Who do they think he is? Is he the Son of God to them, or is he something else? Let's look at Matthew chapter 16 and uh, start with verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But well, what about you, he said, Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, that, that for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Lord, we pray you would help us. Uh, to share Christ's words, Jesus told his disciples it was not the right moment to let people know that he was uh, Christ, the Son of God. But now is the time, Lord. We need to let the world know that Jesus is Christ. We need to let them know he's the Messiah, he's the Savior. Let them know what he has done for us and what he can do for them. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I heard a story about a governor in a state, and he was, uh, I believe, running for re-election. And so they were having, you know, they do these fundraisers, and they do these fundraisers all the time. And so they had this uh, big barbecue, and he had been going around politicking everywhere. So he got to the barbecue. He was absolutely starving. He was very, very hungry. And it was chicken barbecue, so they had chicken there. And he went through the line. He saw all this uh, great chicken and potato salad and stuff. And so he got up to the lady that was passing out the chicken, and she was giving two pieces of chicken per person, okay, because they were afraid they were going to run out. There was too many people there. 
Well, when he got up to the thing, she put two pieces of chicken on his, on his plate, and he goes, listen, I'd like to have a third, and she said, no. And he said, no, come on now, I, I, I'm hungry, I'd like to have a third, and he, she said, no. He said, ma'am, I just don't think you know who I am. She goes, I'm, he goes, I'm the governor of the state, and I'm running for re-election, and th this thing is all about me. He says, I don't care if you're the president of the United States, you get two pieces of chicken, get on down the line. Okay. <laughs> she didn't know who he was, and it didn't matter to her anyway. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but we, we want to, we wanna, it matters to us who Jesus is. And, uh, and it mattered, it mattered to him to find out what his disciples thought about him. Uh, in chapter uh, 15 of uh, Matthew, we, we see Jesus feed the 4,000, and we know that was 4,000 men. So with women and children, it could have been 8,000, uh, 9,000 uh, people. Jesus had just done that in chapter 15. In, uh, in chapter 16, verse 1, the Pharisees and Sadducees asked Jesus to perform a miracle, miraculous sign uh, from heaven. And so here you've got Jesus feeding a whole lot of people, and a lot of people knew about that. Uh, he was a source of food for them at different times. And then the, the Pharisees and Sadducees said, well, hey, we'd like to believe in you, but we want you to put on a miraculous show for us. And so Jesus asked, I believe, the most important question of all time, who do people say that I am? Uh, many, many people have uh, had seen the miracles of Jesus, the things that he had done. Uh, they had heard of the ageless truth and wisdom that he had given them, uh, but he wanted to know what people thought of him. What were people thinking of Jesus? Were they thinking of him as a supplier of their daily needs only, their food, and not a, in a spiritual sense, or were they just looking for another miraculous sign? And Jesus looked at his disciples and wondered not, not only what people were thinking of, but what uh, they were thinking of, what his own disciples were thinking of. And so the disciples answered uh, that they thought, uh, people thought that maybe Jesus was the resurrected John the Baptist. John the Baptist was dead. People held John the Baptist uh, high, in high esteem. Uh, the Pharisees and religious leaders were afraid of John the Baptist because he had so much power with the people. People loved him, great preacher, great representative of God, messenger about the Messiah. And so they thought that he might be John the Baptist. Or maybe he was a uh, Elijah or a Jeremiah, uh, one of the great prophets that had come back uh, to life. Uh, again, these men were faithful prophets. They were well known to the Jews. Uh, many of them may have thought that he was going to be this special prophet above all prophets that was coming. Now, Elijah, if you remember Elijah, he was a faithful, uh, great spokesman for God. In 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah faced off with the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 uh, prophets of Astra. Uh, now, if you've ever heard that story, and I'm not going to tell the whole thing, but there was Elijah was by himself and he had all these other prop pagan prophets. And God had specifically asked him to bring them all in one place. Why? Because God was going to demonstrate his power and then he was going to have God's people wipe them out all at once. Get rid of all these pagan uh, priests. And so there was Elijah, looked like he was by himself, facing off with them. And with God's help, he defeated them and wiped them out. But that was Elijah. Then in 2 Kings chapter 2, Elijah is taken up into heaven by a chariot of fire. Now, I always love this story uh, in, at Bible college because we like to talk about people who didn't see death. And Elijah was one of those guys that didn't experience death the way that we're going to experience death. Well, the way I'm going to experience death. I don't know what's going to happen to you. But anyway, uh, the way that uh, the normal people experience death, he didn't do that. God took him up in a chariot of fire and took him up into heaven with Elisha uh, there in a whirlwind. And so uh, God didn't allow him to see death in that way. And so that uh, singles him out as something special as a prophet. But Jesus would be more than a prophet, much more than Elijah. How do your friends... And your neighbors look at Jesus. Who do they think he is? I've heard many times that uh, they said that Jesus was a great teacher. I've heard that from many people. Great teacher. I used to hang around with some college kids when I was in high school uh, that went to the University of Illinois. And they thought Jesus was this great wise teacher, a wise man, uh, maybe a really good man or an enlightened prophet. 
But most of them, almost all of them I ran into, did not believe that he was God, did not believe that he was the Son of God. And Jesus certainly, uh, they are right in a sense, Jesus was an awesome teacher. And I say this a lot, I love to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to his words. I love to do that. I love to share with you Jesus' words because he was an awesome teacher. There was nobody like him. Uh, we have some great, I believe, preachers in the New Testament. I don't think there's anybody like Jesus who would be able to take normal things like sheep, like farming, and relate it to people and help them to, to see uh, some important truths that he wanted them to get. And so often the scripture says that G the people were amazed at his teaching. I think that's an understatement. Uh, I am always amazed at what Jesus said and what Jesus did. During his teaching, uh, Jesus about the mind and character and commands of God, Jesus talked about some fantastic things that were going to happen to him, and he did. Uh, Jesus told about how he would suffer and die, he gave detail after detail, and then he said he would rise from the dead. If Jesus promised these things and they didn't happen uh, because he wasn't God, again, if he was just a good teacher, if he was just some kind of a wise man, a really good man, if he said these things and they didn't happen, then he would have been what? He would have been a liar. And some people say that not only a liar, he was probably a lunatic because he acted like he believed these things. Uh, he could not be a great teacher or a good man or a prophet if he had told all these lies. I want you to see that. We, gotta, we have always a question for people. If you think Jesus is that, then, then you're believing that some of the things that he said, he lied about. He's either the Son of God, or he can't be these other things. Jesus was either the Son of God, God in the flesh, or he was a dishonest man who deceived mankind with, I believe, the greatest of lies. You know, we've had some people in politics that tell some pretty good whoppers, pretty good lies, okay? I, I listen. I things don't amaze me often because you know I'm like you. I've lived a while, and every once in a while I scratch my head and I said, "Man, I can't believe that you told that whopper. I can't believe you told that on national TV. <laughs> I can't believe how uh, people lie. I can't believe how news la news outlets lie." But let me tell you something: if Jesus was not the Son of God, he deceived uh, people for centuries about who he was. Peter, again, with all his missteps and mistakes, which I, I love that Jesus asked Peter this question, uh, that Peter was the one who answered, because Peter messed up a lot. Peter got himself in trouble with his mouth, which we never do that. So we can judge Peter, because we we're not like that, do we? We don't make mistakes. Uh, sometimes I have my foot on my mouth so much it tastes like a sandal. So uh, anyway... Uh, Peter had lots of mistakes and missteps, uh, but uh, he answered Jesus correctly. He said uh, to Jesus, he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Uh, this was not revealed to you, Peter, by man, but by your father, I believe your father in heaven. And this reminds me of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, if you turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter th uh, 12, verse 3, and you ought to be able to get there pretty quick because I don't have very many scriptures up there today, so that will be easy for you. Paul said, therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I like this. And God's telling me that when I accept Christ or when I'm walking with the Lord, I can't say Jesus is Lord without the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I can't curse God if I've got the Spirit in my heart and my life. But when people come to Christ and they are witnessing about the Jesus Lordship, that comes from the Holy Spirit. I've always said many times that when somebody comes to Jesus, it's an absolute miracle. It is. Because they're not choosing the world, they're choosing Jesus. They're choosing to walk with Christ. And in the world, they've rejected the world and they're following Jesus. And I believe that's every bit of the Holy Spirit working on them. And here, Peter... Peter gives his great confession of faith. And this is the confession of faith that I use when I talk to somebody about coming to Christ and they, they're accepting Christ. I have them say this exact thing. Why? Because Peter's confession, uh, it never loses power. On Peter's confession of faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of living God, uh, he's, Jesus said the church would be built. 
And the foundation of the church would be Jesus Christ. But Jesus, Peter is not the foundation of the church. Let me say that one more time. Peter is not the foundation of the church or the head of the church. We've got confused over the years sometimes. We think about Peter the rock and we've thought, people have thought, that he was the foundation of the church. He was the head of the church. He is not the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. And a lot of denominations today have got confused about this, you see, because they think they're running the church, and they think what they say goes, and they think what they think is important. The only reason that what I think is important is it follows along with what God's Word says, okay? And we've got away, we've got, a lot of churches have got away from the fact that Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. <clears throat> Jesus will build the church and he will build it and he uses us as building materials and Jesus, but Jesus builds the church. In other words, we got all these things that we think that we can do to help the body of Christ. God inspires us to do this, but Jesus promised he would build the church. Jesus gets the credit for what happens in the body of Christ. When the body of Christ prospers, when the church grows, when it goes somewhere, it is not me or you that did it, it is Jesus that did it. Because he promised that he would build a church. And the church that Jesus built is his church. I, I, people will, I'll run into somebody from some place and they'll ask me about the church and I say, well, my church, I'll say my church. And I should be saying, uh, I'm serving at that church because it's Jesus' church. And there's a big difference between saying it's my church and it's his church because Jesus uh, runs the church. Jesus leads the church. As believers in Christ, we are privileged to be part of it, but it's not our church. It is not our church. We are part of the body of Christ. God is using us to build the church. We are his resources. We are his building blocks, but it is his church. And we always need to be careful how we treat Christ's church. We need to be careful how we treat the body of Christ, how we treat the church. I need to be a good steward of what God has promised, uh, prom provided me. He has loaned the church and its work and resources to me. He's loaned it to me. And I need to be careful what I do with it. Uh, while I'm on this earth, God's given the opportunity to be a part of the church. And the church is a blessing. The church is created by Christ. It is his creation, and so uh, he allow, loans it to me to be able to work and to serve in it. But I serve in it until Jesus calls me home to heaven. When I came to this church, uh, I tried to build on what other people had done here. When I leave this church someday, somebody else will come in and take my place and do the same thing. But never, never will the church be mine or anyone else's. It will be Jesus' church. It's his church. And often, again, when men get in trouble, they begin thinking it's their play toy, it's their building, uh, they put their money into it, and it's theirs, and it's not. It's Jesus. When the church uh, ceases to be led by Jesus, it's no longer a church. Okay? And we need to believe that. In Matthew chapter 16, again, verses 19 and 20, Jesus gave his disciples the keys to the kingdom of heaven. All the disciples of Jesus now have the awesome responsibility of sharing the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. I believe that's what this is about. A lot of people have a lot of confusion on what those two verses mean. I personally believe that he was talking about them sharing the salvation of Christ with the world. Those 11 disciples were called with the duty of spreading the gospel not only to the Jews, but they were also going to be spreading it to the Gentiles. And that was the keys to the kingdom of heaven. God was giving them the, the ability to be able to share that gospel. Uh, what a privilege that was. What a blessing that was to be the guys that were going to start to share the gospel with people so they could share the gospel with others. Many people will never really know about the salvation that comes through Jesus unless we tell them. Now, this is important. I'm almost done. And a lot of God's people said, amen, please stop. Uh, this is important. Our world is not becoming more knowledgeable about Jesus it's not. We often think that, you know, because of technology, because of whatever, that the world is becoming more knowledgeable about Christ. They're not. They're becoming less. They're less informed about who Jesus is. That I, I say this in many different ways, but they don't know the Jesus that you fell in love with. They don't. They know something else. 
They think something else about Jesus. They've created something in their mind or they've been taught something. They have their own philosophy or theology about who Jesus is, but they have not met the Jesus that you know and that you love, the one that you fell in love with, the one that you asked to save you. And the whole thing is about you and I sharing with them the Jesus that we know, the unfiltered Jesus from the Gospels. Sharing them with the salvation that comes through, came through him, that why he came and why he died. They need to be more and more informed about that. And often we think that people know when folks they don't know. A good example of this, uh, many years ago, well, it was over 30 years ago when I was in Arkansas, I had a couple coming to my church in my church, the Lord's Church in Arkansas, okay? And... Uh, and they were probably in their 30s, maybe just under 30. Um, I think he was just out of school. Maybe she had just finished. I think she had just finished her doctorate. Uh, I knew that he was, he talked to me. He was a, a, a solid believer, but he said, I want you to come by and talk to my wife. I come by the house and talk to my wife. Well, I pulled him aside later and I said, uh, just give me a cruel background. You want me to talk to your wife? What's going on? He said, well, I want you to share with her about God and about Jesus. I said, oh, great. I said, where, where do you want me to start? At the beginning. At the beginning, he goes, she's got a doctor degree and she knows nothing about the Bible, about Jesus, about God. She knows zero. And I just about fell over. I said, you're, you, no, you're going to, when you start talking to her, you got to start with creation, start working your way through the Bible. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. She had this great education, went to a great university, and she didn't know anything about Jesus. She did nothing about the Bible. And we're mistaken in believing that our neighbor knows what we know about Jesus. And my friends, they do not. They do not. Now, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I need to share that with other people every single day because I never know how much other people know. And when I begin to talk with them and probe them, I begin to find out people know less about Jesus and they need to know more. And who's going to tell them? Who's going to tell them? The people who know him the best, and that's us. That's us. And so I hope that you, you think about what the disciples were thinking of and, and then again what we are thinking of, our neighbors, what they feel about Jesus, what they know about Jesus, and that we're wanting to share with them who he is because he's the Savior. He's our Lord. He's our Master. Uh, he's the one who's the expert on love and peace and forgiveness, and we want other people to have what we have. But they won't get it from the world. They'll get it from who? They'll get it from us. Let's stand together and let's pray. Lord, I, I really ask you to uh, inspire us and convict us of the fact that we need to share with people the Jesus that we fell in love with, the Jesus that has saved us, the Jesus that has promised us eternal life in heaven. We need to uh, share that with other people. A lot of people are looking for forgiveness. They're looking for a way to deal with their guilt. Uh, they want to have hope. They want to have a purpose in their life. And they won't find that unless they find Jesus. So, Lord, we need your help. Share. Help us to share it with others. Help us to tell people who Jesus is. Help us to let them know that Jesus came into this world because he loved them. And he died for them. And if they accept him and follow them, they can have their sins washed away and live in heaven someday. Lord, bless us with those thoughts. Help us again to be convicted, to warm up to the fact that it has to be us sharing with others. And Lord, we want to share about what Christ did because that's why we gather around this table to remember what Christ did for us. We thank you for the body that was broken, that was torn for us, and the blood that was shed for those many hours of suffering that Jesus went through for each one of us. I could not have salvation. I could not have forgiveness of sins if it wasn't for Christ's sacrifice. So I thank you so much, Father, and I thank you so much, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I want to encourage you to take uh, the bulletin with you and, and look at these announcements. Top of that, of course, we're encouraging you to be part of our small groups. They're going really well. And Steve had a, uh, the men's meeting this week. And Steve, you want to just say a couple words about that, please? That's one of our small groups. That is. And I will say that all of our guys still have their fingers in their hands after axe throwing and their guts are in great shape after fried bologna sandwiches. Yeah. So yeah. we had a great night. Uh, guys, if you weren't able to make it out, it's a guarantee we're going to do that again. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. But I, Thursday night, every Thursday night, come out. Uh, Kurt, you, you spend a little bit of time frying up all that bologna. And, uh, yeah, I just a small part of of the big yeah. picture of what you're doing. I only doing noticed there. about a quarter of the baloney was gone before we got here. Yeah, place, there was, so a, there was a, I had a couple of accidents. Yeah, right. a couple <laughs> of things you have to take care of. But, you know, a lot of people don't know that bologna has a lot of uses. It's oh, it not does. just, you know, fried bologna and bologna sandwiches. Uh, there's uh, bologna and eggs. Uh, people don't know about that. Uh, there's also a uh, bologna surprise, bologna oh, burritos, yeah. and bologna a la mode. Yeah. Ah. And all very good dishes. Listen, I'm going to call bologna on I, I like I, I like bologna surprise. You get to put bologna, you go, surprise, it's bologna. But anyway, uh, that was great, Steve. And I got up the next day and, and came to, because he was off on Friday, and took a hose out there and hosed all the blood out there. Right, so, right. all the parking lot. That was uh, that was something else. Somebody really bled out there. There's a lot of blood over Just there. Just a little so. bit. Yeah, yeah, but that was uh, that was a great event, Steve. Uh, I'm glad I've got my fingers in shirt. Yeah, yeah, you know, I uh, we didn't he I didn't hear an ambulance uh, rolling or anything, so that's good. That Turney gets worked, huh? They did. Okay, yeah, they okay, did, good. Yeah. Uh, but Steve has those axes in, in his office. You take a look, like take a look at. They're kind of sharp, aren't they? A little bit. I, you know what? I I nicked myself just picking it up. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so throwing is a different story, though. So. Yeah, throwing is a different story. Yeah. It's a good time. But, guys, come out and join us on Thursday evening. Every Thursday evening at 630. We're doing something different every week and different activities. And uh, we're going to improve on that axe throwing and get our game going there. Yeah, so. well, that's good. That's good. And, Steve, I uh, invite some people to be live targets. That's a little bit easier. A lot you better. know what? There's live a lot, uh, uh, someone mentioned there's a lot of cats on the uh, Isle of Capri, too. So live, live targets. So, I did know. not say that. Okay. It was not me. It was him. Okay, it was him. I get all this bad stuff coming on off the Internet when I start talking about cats. I love cats. Everybody knows that. I keep three in my freezer. Okay, so I love them. Uh, please don't forget that we have prayer shawls available. That's in the bulletin. Also, uh, next Sunday, that we're, uh, some of us are going to camp uh, next Sunday after this service. We also have Father's Day coming up and also the 4th of July patriotic uh, presentation. And we want to make sure that you invite veterans to that. Please do. That's going to be a good day, uh, an exciting day. And we're going to have a, bar uh, a uh, picnic afterwards, That's right? right. Picnic right. afterwards. So, good. God is good is what I can say about uh, that. I'm uh, glad, I don't know about the rest of you. I'm glad our church dinners are coming back. So that's oh, yes. Our church dinners are coming back. Yes. Yes. 
That's terrific. That's terrific. Anything else I didn't mention, Steve? Don't There's forget, today is the first day that Sunday school is yes. back. 10 o'clock, yes. we have two adult <coughs> classes. One is the Christian Standard lesson. A lot of great discussion opportunity in there. And then the second one is a series on heaven. Uh, both those are in the fellowship hall. Uh, go and get you a cup of coffee and then hang out with us in uh, 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 the classrooms for good lessons. Yeah, two adult classrooms and want you to be part of that. And uh, are you sending anybody to heaven today? You're just going to talk about today it. Today we're talking about heaven and how you can get there. Okay, all right. Amen. Amen. All right. Terrific. Let's stand together and ask God to bless us. Thank you so much for being with us today. Lord, we thank you for the time of praise. We thank you for letting us gather around your word. But this table, Lord, was a real blessing to us today. We thank you for letting us commune with you. We thank you for inviting us to be here. And we pray, Lord, we'd enjoy this opportunity every chance we get. And we would invite others to know you and to know your church. We thank you for our friends that have come to visit with us today. We ask you to bless them, watch over them, and we look forward, Lord, to us gathering together again. Help us, Lord, as we enter into Bible study this week, as we pray, as we encourage one another until you come back. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.